2000, just, uh, just shout them out, y'all. Like I said, I'd rather show off what books I'm reading. I'd rather show off, you know, how they can act, you know, the, the process and the blueprint to, to get, you know, the, the material items that we, we've always sought after. So, I, I mean, it, it just ain't never really, like, as much as I'm into fashion and getting something, fly. Something that I know you can stop me a bit, just say stop. Right? <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm going too far. Go bro. in. Go as far as you need to go. Hoji. Nah, yo, Nick. You, you, you grew up with some rough guys. Right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, you got the color on. <laughs> hey, hey. Nah, you know, it's, it's interesting, man. Growing up on the West and even shooting in, in my area when we came up, they didn't just wear red. They also, you know, they wore green, too. I grew up in Southeast San Diego. Um, and then obviously, too, in, in LA and moving around. No, no, around. Nick, 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 hold up, Nick. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they love you. Like, like, you're, like, you're the poster child. Everybody <laughs> thinks Nick Cannon is all jokes and, and fun and games, but you grew up with a wild bunch of the most it, realest guys in the universe, and they love Nick Cannon. Yeah, now to make it out of the projects that I made it out of, I mean, we all come from it. So it, it's, it was a, an example of, yo, you don't have to get caught up in, in it. And, you know, you know, dodging drive-bys on the way to school, losing homies, like all that stuff. Even once I got in high school, I just wanted to live that, leave that life alone. So when I saw them opportunities of like being, getting on stage and telling jokes and being a kid on Nickelodeon, I had already lived the life, you know what I mean? And, I was like, yeah, I I square up immediately. I saw that as a a, a blessing from God to where it's like, yo, I could leave the streets alone. I could, you know, be able to pay my mom's rent and take care of my family. And all I got to do is be silly and tell, tell jokes. Right and... now, some of the most, <laughs> some of the most respected guys I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love Nick yeah. Cannon, and they say, yo, he from the cloth. He from the family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, and it's a way of life, man. We come from it when you got guys that that consider you family, and you know, we we know what these organizations uh, were originated from because it was about protecting our communities. And I was one of those kids that you know people wanted to protect. So, so the OGs in my neighborhood, you know, they knew I was affiliated and certified, so I didn't have to prove it to nobody. So even when I got in the game, I was never talking that rah rahness. I was trying to be the most clean cut. You know, squared in a box of Apple Jacks cat I could be. So like when people would call me corny and all that, I was I loved it. I was like, absolutely. <laughs> that, that's gonna keep the police off me. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. be that. You know guy. what happened, yo Nick? What happened to me was oh, uh, and we could talk about it. You get into this little uh, rap beef with uh Eminem. Right? <laughs> yeah, Again. Like, <laughs> yo Nick, you get into the right he he dissed you on my song, but you know, they broke it down to me that y'all had been dissing each other forever. I didn't even know. And, right, and right. So, so some people who love Eminem hit me up and say, yo, Joe. Uh, and I'm like, Nick Cannon? Nick Cannon? And that's my man. And M, they cool. And then when I made a <laughs> You had no idea. Calls, <laughs> when I made a couple of phone calls, and the homies was like, no, Nick Cannon certified. He with us. I'm like, what? For real? And I'm like, and um, what is the beef with Eminem? What's the, like, what is the beef? What the, I mean, you in the big show. Let's keep it real, man. What's the, what's the beef? We on the big Nick show. I'm, I'm, Eminem. I'm talking to Joker. I got to go in. <laughs> I got to give you Joker the show, Not bro. This is a Joker moment. Nah, real facts. I, this is my thing. I'm going to be honest with you. And, you know, I say this on my radio show, you know, Power 106 all the time. Like, man, I've always been an Eminem fan. You know, the artist is um, is is somebody that I feel like is super skilled. You know, uh, he's good for the culture, been good for the culture, been good to the culture. Um, but I think as, as a man where he and I went left, uh, 
I don't really know what he and my ex-wife had going on. I think she got a new book coming out, and she talking about it in there. And, no <laughs> way! Yeah. Yo, yeah, Mariah so got I'll, a book talking about it. Yeah, yeah, Mariah got she she doing a uh, an exclusive, you know, memoir oh telling my God, talking. I do that. That's a jump for moment. Hey, yo, yeah, so hey, yo, but hey, that yo, was none of my business. You know what I mean? I don't. You know how we do. We hey, yo, we don't never hate on. So. Yeah, so but like 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 I said, that was before me. We got married in in two thousand eight, and you know up until then I had been nothing but uh, a Mariah and fan. I you know I was just excited to be with Mariah Carey, <laughs> like, and I wasn't even aware that they had interaction. I don't know if they dated or how you know how things go in this industry. But she was telling me like, dude was just super disrespectful, and. I was like, all right, well, you know, as a husband, like, you know, if I got to protect my wife at, at any cost, it's on, you know? And then, but we didn't even really think nothing of it. And then all of a sudden, dude came out with a crazy record, like, just blatantly just disrespecting, like, using terms, like, that, you know, we don't stand for <laughs> as men, like, talking about my wife. And then, set, and then called my name. So I was like, you know, at the time, you know, I'm being, I'm managed by, you know, Chris Lighty, you know what I'm saying? You know, one of our brothers, God rest his soul. And, and, you know, he got the connection with, you know, cause he was managing fifth at the time. And, you know, I think him and M's manager was, was, was super cool, Paul. So he was like, yo, Nick want to holla at your, your guy. Cause this is, you know, we get, I'll get all the jokes in the rah rah. I'm Mr. Wild and out. We can make jokes all day long, but when you go to a certain point where one, you start lying and then two, you start blatant, like calling my wife out her name, all kind of whores and cunts and all of this craziness. You got to see me. We got to talk about this man to man. And I was really just looking, especially then I we wasn't even about no music. I wasn't trying to rap or nothing. Like we, you know, we want, I wanted to have a real man to man conversation. And it was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. He doesn't want to talk. And I was like, well, how you just going to say some wild shit? And then you ain't, you don't want to talk to me. And I said, like, now that's even triple disrespectful. <laughs> you know what I mean? So from that's where it kind of kicked off because I was trying to handle it like a man and get to it. And then, you know, at the time, I think he, they kept putting records out back and forth. Mariah put out the obsessed joint where she, she was him in the video. She went, like, triple platinum. Yo, Mar Mariah got a hit off that shit, yeah, off yeah, that yeah, energy. Yeah, that joint went to number one. She came back from that motherfucker shit. That was like an R&B diss record. Smash number so that was like she really needed, yeah. I, she might need to do nothing else with it, and you know, like she, she's the queen. She the goat on her own. So I ain't even have to, you know. I was just cheerleading from the sideline, really. And then dude just kept going. He kept getting more disrespectful, but wouldn't, you know. I BT awards, different award show. I, you know me. I'm, I move how I move. So I was walking up like, yo, let's just have this man to man conversation. And it never happened. But then, you know, time, time went on, cooler heads prevailed. You know, we, we got later on, we, we start to joke about it. I'm trying to invite him to wild and out. I figure at this point, like, you know, bygones is bygones, decades have passed. And I mean, he just kept belaboring it. I think even it was another conversation. I think tips, uh, um, Pause. I was on T uh, Ti's uh, podcast, it, and he brought it up. You know what I mean? And we were just talking about like you know, we know Ti got hands. I box. We all we all come from cats who fight. So I, I think I might have said something slick like that. Dude ain't no fighter. You know what I mean? Like just talking, we joking around. And I think that might have been what kind of because it, it was during the same time that your record came out. So I think he might have maybe caught wind or something like that. Because I don't know why he would be talking about some stuff from like. 10 years prior and you know I, I i saw it as an opportunity to 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 promote wild and out so <laughs> we just started, he went at me i went at him i put my guy my, the battle rapper from wild and out out there and you know the ratings went up so <laughs> and we still waiting <laughs> we went to number one off that so i appreciate it so nick everybody is everybody's in it because i want to set the 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 the, the tone, right? So everybody's protesting because of George Floyd and Brianna and uh, Aubrey and, and everything is, is America 
is 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 Black Lives Matter. Everybody's in the middle of the street, even in the COVID with a mask on or whatever. And so right. you go and interview the guy that's too black for public enemy. <laughs> Listen, you didn't get the pure. You got the pure. You got the Pablo Escobar. Of yeah. The whole uh, right. <laughs> black empowerment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the guy who's too radical for public enemy. Public enemy yeah. is too black, too strong. And you go right. get this guy. So what are you thinking right there?